Hello, everyone. My name is Roy Rumbo. I'm an accounting professor at the University of North Texas, and I teach intermediate accounting one and two principles of accounting from time to time. Uh, today, I am going to be working problems for long-term assets and the acquisition of long-term assets. Uh, the next lecture, next chapter, if you will, is going to be what do we do after we acquire them and how do we record uh, their benefit and expense. I use the uh, McGraw-Hill textbook, Intermediate Accounting. Some of these problems come from that textbook. It's uh, the uh, Spiceland Nelson Thomas textbook. It's a great textbook, highly recommend it. And with that, time to go to work. All right, I've got about seven or eight of these. Again, I do find this to be uh, a bit easier, maybe than some of our, our prior chapters. And so uh, this is, if you're in my class, this is opportunity time, you know, end out intermediate the one year with the great year. So uh, here, Belden, and again, these are all about acquisition. Belden Corporation purchased land as a factory site for $60,000. An old building on the property was demolished. Construction began on the new building. It's completed December 15th. So here's the costs that were incurred. We'll go through each of these and we're able to sell some of the, uh, you know, salvage materials for the demolition of the building for 2000, so that was good news. So how much should we capitalize as the cost of land and the cost of new building? So we'll just go through each of these. And so uh, 10-1, and I'm gonna do, uh, put these as either land or building. All right. $60,000 um, purchase price. That was definitely for the land. There was no building. Uh, uh, the building that existed there was destroyed. And so we're not going to worry about that. And it was destroyed for $4,000. And so that is a cost of getting that uh, land uh, in a condition that we can use it. So we're allowed to capitalize that $4,000. Arch architects fees for the new building. Uh, they were required in order to uh, be able to have a building. And so definitely part of the uh, building cost and that cost can uh, be capitalized. Legal fees for title investigation of the land. Yep, those are allowed as part of the acquisition cost uh, that it takes uh, to do that. And then uh, next time is property taxes on the land for $3,000. Well, they uh, this property taxes for the period beginning March 1st, 2021. And uh, we bought the building March 1st, 2021. You're not allowed to capitalize insurance property taxes after the date of acquisition. If we had paid some back taxes, not the case here, uh, we would have been able to capitalize it. But now uh, that's part of our ongoing expense. May I put an expense here, column. Expense column, 3,000 for expense. All right, next, construction cost for the new building, okay? 500,000, uh, that's, that's pretty easy. And uh, $5,000, remember, we can capitalize interest it's on the construction loan. And uh, obviously it must've been during the period of construction, we'll assume that, it doesn't tell us otherwise. So that can be capitalized as part of the cost of the building. And then the last item here, the salvage materials, you know, we saved two thousand dollars by selling those salvage materials. So uh, that's not going to be income. That's going to be uh, reducing our costs for the land. So now it's just a matter of adding these things down. I get my calculator. Well, I don't really need a calculator for this. I could see that's sixty-four thousand dollars for the land, and. Uh, $517,000 for the building. Pretty easy. So the one to know there was that property taxes after the sell uh, could not be um, included. Exercise 10-2. Here we go. All right. Here we go. Uh, so here, uh, uh, I, I like to look at the, uh, uh, prepare the necessary journal entries. So we'll have to do journal entries for here. 
here was for, and this is uh, for equipment, purchased new equipment and made the following expenditures. So let's just, uh, first of all, let's, uh, let's just see what's gonna be the equipment cost. So let's go down here, equipment, expense, and since I know this problem, I already know there's gonna be a prepaid expense, a different asset. So purchase price for the equipment, 45,000. That's certainly capitalizable. Sales tax, that is capitalizable, 2,200. Freight charges for the shipment of equipment. Well, we, we are allowed to capitalize, which means record into an asset, uh, all the costs it takes to get this asset in the condition that we can, in location that we could use. So that is allowed as a capitalizable cost, $700. Um, and insurance on equipment for the first year. Well, that's after we uh, have got the equipment. So that is definitely not going to be capitalizable. That's going to be as we operate. And so that is it's not really an expense because it's a prepaid expense. So we'll put that in prepaid. And installation of the equipment. Well, we know that is uh, capitalizable. So let's just see what we have total for equipment, uh, 47 to 47, 48,900. So first part of the um, journal entry, equipment, 48,900. And then prepaid, Asset uh, prepaid expense, which is an asset, is going to be nine hundred. Now it says here that only the equipment and sales tax was done on an open account, so that's going to be accounts payable, and so that's going to be the forty-seven two hundred credit, and then the remainder is going to be uh, cash. We paid cash for the remainder, so that'd be the forty-eight nine. Uh, 48,900 plus 47,200, 2,600. Uh, this is like too easy, too easy for you guys, you intermediate students. Oh, man. All right. Next one. 10-3. Okay, a little bit more um, meat to this one that certainly looks like here. And so we've got a uh, uh, purchase land and building for 4 million. In addition to purchase price, we've made the following expenditure. So let's get uh, you know, our asset, and we don't know, uh, land and building, because we're gonna have to later allocate. But let's go get our total cost, land and building, well, let's see, we might have some things that are expensive. I don't remember. All right, uh, we paid four million. Uh, title insurance, definitely that is capitalizable, 16,000. Legal fees for drawing the contract, well, that's definitely a capitalizable cost. All the fees and expenses are for doing that. And prorated property taxes for the period after acquisition. That's going to be, uh, well, that's going to be expense. It may be a prepaid expense. They don't really give us, uh, you know, that, um, you know, did we pay it up front or not? I'm not sure. And then state transfer fees, 4000 So our total valuation for the land and the building, our total cost, uh, amounts incurred, assets we're gonna put on the book uh, is 4 million and 25,000. But uh, now we have a, a lump sum, uh, a multi-asset purchase. We bought both a land and a building. And it's important that we separate these two out, that we record a different value. We can't just put it in the land and building account because the land is not depreciated. There's no depreciation expense for land, only the building. So the useful lives are different here, permanent and maybe 30 to 40 years for the building. So uh, we're gonna have to allocate this out between land and building. 
I'm going to come down here. So we're going to need the fair values and then the percent to allocate, the price, and then um, the initial book value. Now, this initial book value, I tell you what that's going to be, 4,025,000. So we're going to take this 4,025,000 and we've got to put 1% of it in the land, another percent in the building. And so for both of these, the price is 4,025. All right. And it gives us the fair market values. So the, the land uh, would be worth 3.3 million. And the building would be a million one hundred thousand. So if purchased separately, we just add those together: three point three million and the one point one. Uh, the fair market value is four point four. Uh, do we put that on the books? No, because that's not what we paid. We only paid four million oh twenty five, and we've got to split this, uh, you know, proportionally into the book values based on the relative fair market values. What does that mean? Let's just see what you, I think better to see in practice. Uh, take the 3.3 million divided by the total individual fair market value. So 3.3 divided by 4.4, 75%. And this 1.1 divided by 4.4 is 25%. So now we just take these, you know, so 75% of the 4025 is going to be the land value that we record debit land to. And 25% of the 4025 is going to be the building that we debit the building account. So let's see what that would be 4025 uh, times 75%. Uh, percent. That's going to be 3 million. 750 and 25% here, 1 million oh, uh, oh, 06, 250. Again, add these two up, and you're going to get the 4025. So now we've taken the 4025 in a very systematic, methodical, objective way of allocating that. We've got uh, you know, what we would debit to land and building uh, for this journal entry. And again, where did the 308? 750 come, that was 4025 times 75%. And 4025 times 25% in a million oh six. Again, this stuff is uh, easy, easy stuff. It's always, you know, it's easy when you're doing it like this. Oh, there was another problem there. There was, a, I think, a part B to that, wasn't right there? Yes, there was a part B. Let's go back. But that's a good uh, part B there. I like this one. I remember I, I have to I have to do these ahead of this lecture because I don't want to be like sitting here screwing up right here on, on, on live uh, you know, nearly live TV. So let's I don't want to be doing that. All right. So this one says repeat requirement one, assuming that immediately after the acquisition they demolished the building. Demolition costs were two fifty. And the materials over six thousand, and they spent eighty six thousand clearing and grading the land. All right, guess what? Uh, do we have to split between the land and the building? No, because the building is being sold. It is gone, gone's up, and so everything now is just going to be the land. So how much do we pay for the land? Four million. And then uh, title insurance, this is all the same stuff we just did, 16,000, that's a good capitalized cost. Uh, legal fees, we're allowed to capitalize legal fees, administrative costs. Property taxes for after acquisition, no, that's gonna be an expense in the future. And then state transfer fees, uh, we had to pay those to get this building and you know, ready uh, to go. Now, we now have incurred some that we're only looking at this number two here, Demolition costs, we had to go demolish that building. That is a part of getting that land ready to be used. And so that's gonna be included here, 250,000. 
Um, and we were able to salvage some materials like that in some of the previous 10-2. Uh, uh, and so we're gonna save money for that, 6,000. And then um, $86,000 for clearing and grading the land. Well, that's also part of getting it ready. Now, if we put a parking lot there, that's gonna be a land improvement, the cost of the parking lot. The clearing and grading, that's getting it ready for use. So nearly all of this is allowed. And uh, so we get to, uh, I thought I saw something else here. Maybe that's it. And so we get to, we add all these up, 4,355,000. Uh, I'm just going to add these up to make sure I got it right. I don't want to screw up. I'm going to count it. You know, I double check everything. Good to do on an exam. So, yeah, 4,355,000. Now, I think in the actual problem in the book, that's why I was like kind of getting slow here. It did talk about um, they spent $82,000 for a parking lot and $40,000 for landscaping. Well, landscaping and a parking lot, they're improvements after you got it ready. And so that parking lot is gonna be a land improvement and the landscaping would be a land improvement would be a different asset, you know? And so that didn't show up here on my PowerPoint. But if you looked at the book uh, example, if you're in my class, you'd see that. Okay, now we're ready for 10-5. And so we got a, a whole lot of, a lot of stuff uh, going on here. All right. So, and here we need to do the uh, journal entry, record this. And so number one, uh, we've got the exclusive right uh, to sell the Expo workout equipment uh, for 200,000. Um, but, you know, they, they bought, what did they buy here? Um, it's, it's really a, um, a patent because they had the uh, other company, uh, Symmetry, had developed this uh, this unique design and patented it. And so the Bratton Fitness Company wants to use that. And so they're going to purchase the, the, the right to use this uh, for 200000 And it's a patent. And they had to pay another 10000 in legal fees. So patent. Two hundred and ten thousand debit. Second one. Uh, this is a uh, three-year agreement with Silver's Gem uh, <clears throat> to use its name for the new facility. So this is uh, going to be uh, a franchise. Silver's. Um, they want to use the Silver Gem's name. They must have a good brand name, and they want to use that in their area. Maybe it's a different area than where Silver's Gem is located. And they're going to pay three hundred thousand dollars upfront for that three-year agreement, and they've got to pay five thousand dollars for each month that operates. And they also purchase uh, four hundred thousand dollars of exercise equipment. So the three hundred thousand—that's an intangible asset, asset, a franchise. And the equipment. is 400,000. And this $5,000 additional fee, they'll just be expensing each month going forward, but not the upfront purchase of these. And so uh, let's look at this. Keep in mind, not just jump ahead to the next chapter, but that's gonna be amortized uh, over the three years, that 300,000. Got a finite life to it. And they also got the, uh, the right to sell Healthy Choice, a book authorized by Kent Patterson, and they bought the exclusive right to sell that for $25,000. So what do they own now? They own a copyright. For $25,000. And, and that's it. And then just uh, paid cash for all that, two ten dollars plus $300,000. Plus 400, plus 25, plus uh, 935,000.
rolling along. Let's look at the uh, next problem here. 10 dash six. What do we got here? Okay. Uh, I always look at the required first. That's always a good thing to do on the exam. What are they looking for? So you don't waste your time reading it. Know what you're looking for. So no, oh, goodwill. So what am I looking for? It's, first of all, you, there's no goodwill unless it's one company buying another company. And then it's the excess over the fair value, not the book value. And so Wolfson Corporation, they're the acquirer. They're buying all the common stock of Barney Corporation. So Barney had, Corporation has all these uh, that's what their book values are. That's what, if you looked at their, their financial statements, uh, that's what you'd see. But you do not record the book value. When you buy the corporation, you revalue all these. You bring independent appraisers, and you look at every single one of these items, every asset and liability out there, and you revalue these at fair value. And you put them on your books. All of these assets and liabilities are going to go on the Wolfson's books at uh, fair value. And so uh, to calculate goodwill, it's pretty easy uh, because it's the uh, purchase price, which was 17 million minus the fair value of the net assets. So we've got, um, you know, uh, burn assets, and PP and E uh, valued at fourteen million. Other assets, million five. And now we've got uh, current liabilities, 4 million. That's going to be a minus, right? Because that's um, the opposite of an asset. You know, that's not what we own. Well, yeah, by the way, uh, Wolfson, who's buying this Barney, now they're going to owe that 4 million. That becomes their liability. The day of acquisition, that becomes their liability. And also the long-term liabilities. So they get these. They're theirs now. That's what they... When they determined the purchase price of 17 million, they took into account the fact that after we buy this company, we're gonna take on some long-term liabilities of 5.5 million and current liabilities of 4 million. But we also get all these good guys too. So what's the value of all the net assets? This is 13,500,000. And so this is, you know, what they bought. So what's, so they paid 17 million for assets and liabilities that are only worth 13 and a half million. They overpaid, if you will, <laughs> based on the fair value of all that, uh, 3.5 million. Now, I don't know if they overpaid really or not, because you know, uh, many companies do overpay in an acquisition and still you, you stick that uh, in goodwill. Uh, now, what does that represent? They were willing to pay 17 million, three and a half million over because there's something they believe about this company that its location or its management team or maybe its expertise in technology, there's something there that has great value that's not been valued in, ton, in these assets and they were willing to, to pay that. Maybe it's synergy between their company and, and the, the new company. So they were willing to pay three and a half million and that was, uh, goes into Goodwill. And uh, you know, we would debit all these assets, credit these liabilities. We also uh, debit uh, Goodwill for, for three and a half million. No, wrong direction. Okay. Now, this is a really good one. This is what you might see more like in a multiple choice. You know, it's, uh, in other words, it's not easy. It's got a little bit of hair on it. Yeah. Same problem, really, but you've just got to figure it out. So, 
So let's just see what we have here. So they paid 11 million. We're, again, calculate the amount, pay for goodwill. So we're doing the same thing, uh, purchase price. was 11 million. And the net assets, the book value was 7,800. Now, they don't give us uh, all the fair values here. So we're gonna have to start with that book value. And that's why this one is hard. And we've got to minus for receivables. So in this 7.8 million, the receivables were valued at 1.3 million, but they were overvalued by uh, 200,000. So we're gonna subtract 200,000. We will be at 7.6 million, but the property and plant and equipment is worth a million four more than the book value. And these are adjustments. And this is nothing more than 9.4 minus the 8.0 there. And the intangible assets, they're really worth something. Uh, they're plus a million. Now, goodwill. So why does it have some hair on it? We only get the book value, and then we have to go in and adjust that book value uh, for the three differences there that they give us. So 11 million. Minus 200 minus. Oh, you know what? This should be a subtraction and an add back. And I probably should have done it a different way uh, that make it easier. That's why I get the wrong answer because I, I you know what the right answer would be. Let's do it this way. I'm gonna, sorry about that. I'm gonna redo it like this. Purchase price, 11 million. Because this will make more sense to you. I should have done this way. So what is the net asset value? It's book value. I tried to do a shortcut and it did not work for me. And so be careful with shortcuts when you're doing the exam. Here's the book value. To the book value, I'm subtract receivable adjustment minus 200. I'm gonna add for PP and E, million four. And I'm gonna add for the intangible. And what I'm ending up with, fair value of assets purchase. Okay, now, this is a much, much better way of looking at it. Forget all, all the, and I'm not redoing this video because I made a mistake, you know, so, uh, but it's uh, hopefully fun to see the professor screw up when I tried to shortcut that. So, uh, 7,800. So, yeah, that was a bad way to even think about it. So the book value, we're trying to get from the book value to the fair value. And we know here uh, the receivables book value is too high by 200. So I subtract those. The property plan equipment to fair value is a million four higher. So I add that back in. In the tangibles, or a million dollars higher, 200 to a million too. I add that back in. So now I can get to the fair value. So I'm paying 11 million for individual assets uh, at 10 million. Goodwill equals a million dollars. 
And I'm glad that, uh, I'm almost kind of glad that I made the error up there because I think I could have confused people trying to shortcut it. What I was trying to do is do these, you know, <laughs> kind of uh, to the end result, starting with the purchase price, instead of just calculating the subtotal. Much better that, uh, that I made a mistake so I could show you the subtotal and what we're trying to do here, which is the fair value of the assets purchased for 10 million. Again, I started with the book value and added or subtracted the changes given to us here. And I get to the, the total fair value purchase and then how much we pay for that, 11 to so we overpaid, if you will, in excess of the fair values by a million dollars. All right, 10-8. I'll try not to go too fast and shortcut these things anymore. All right, uh, the Pinewood Company purchased two buildings on four acres of land. And so they did this for 900,000, but according to individual appraisals, you know, uh, building A was, uh, had a fair value of uh, 450, building B 250 and land 300. So this is a multi-asset purchase. And again, we're just trying to allocate uh, based on their relative fair values and record uh, the amount we paid allocated. Now, how, because we don't put more, we don't put more on our books than what we pay. We are still uh, sticking with the historical cost principle. And so we're going to do that same kind of columns I had before, fair value, percent allocation, price paid, and then um, initial book value, if you will. This is what will go on our books. So let's just go down the line. Uh, building A, building B, and then land. Uh, so the fair value of building A is 450. Fair value of building B, 250. And the land is 300. And so that's six, seven. So the total of the fair values is a million dollars. And so, uh, but we only paid 900. Let's just put the price up here. It's on, I'll do it three times. And uh, we're trying to get, we're trying to take this 900 and allocate it proportionally to A, B, and the land. And how do we do that? Based on the relative fair values. Now, the individual fair values add up to a million. We only paid 900. <laughs> we can only put 900 on our books. So 450 divided by 1,000, that would be. 45%, 250 divided by 1,000, 250%, and 300%. So that I get to my uh, 100%. So these are the allocations that I take across times the nine. So 45%, 900 is uh, 405 and uh, 900 times 25% 225 and 30% times 900, I could do that, 270. And if you're doing this on exams, it's a good time to check your math here. So 405, 225 plus and 270 plus 900. And so, if I add all three of these, I get 900. So I did all my math right. And so I would, that's the, uh, I would debit building A account for 405, B, building B for 225 and land for 270. And it matters because these three, I don't know if A and B have different useful lice for depreciation, but land does not have depreciation. So that 270 will not be depreciated. So it really matters uh, for the future of accounting that we get that right. And then uh, the very last problem uh, looks like a fun one, uh, capitalized interest. And we're just gonna do it uh, for 2021. So again, uh, if we didn't spend these amounts, uh, here's the amounts we spent uh, 
in, in 2021, looks like 900. You know, I don't know how much the total that is. Uh, a million, one million, five, two. It's about two and a half million dollars. If we didn't spend that, you know, we could have paid off some of these bonds. We wouldn't have incurred that interest. So the interest uh, is an actual cost allowing us to get this facility uh, ready for use. So we are allowed under the rules uh, to capitalize that interest. And so we capitalize it starting with the first day of expenditures, uh, January 1, and we had 500,000 January 1. Um, March 1, 600,000. Uh, July 31, 480,000. And September 30th, 600,000. And December 31st, 300,000. Now, you know, this 500 was outstanding for the whole year. So uh, our interest cost, we incurred that interest cost for the whole year. So let's take that times 12 divided by 12. This was only out there for 10 months, right? So January and February, we didn't have any interest uh, for this particular purchase. So we cannot capitalize any 10 twelves. This, uh, the month of July is not in there. So we start with August, September, October, November, December, five months. And then 600,000, September, September is not in. This is October, November, December, three twelfths. And this is December 31st. We had no interest because the last day of the year, time zero. Let's just do our math here. 600 times uh, 10 twelfths. Also 500, 480 uh, times 5 twelfths, 200, 600 times 3 twelfths, 150, uh, zero, easy. And we get to a million, 350,000 on a weighted average basis that was outstanding um, that we're incurring interest for. See how easy this math is? And then I just take that uh, times the 8%. And equals 108,000. Debit building, 108,000. What do I credit? Interest expense. So that cost will be depreciated maybe over 30 years. And instead of expensing that immediately, uh, we take it out of expense. Oh man, operational manager, they love when you pull stuff out of expense. This is the one place where we could be heroes in accounting. And there's not many places. Usually uh, we're, we're coming uh, to the party uh, and letting people know, hey, we gotta, we gotta charge your budget with this big expense. Maybe it's a contingent liability, things you'll study later. And uh, oh man, they you're not you're not one of the favorite people in the business when you do that. And I, you know, sometimes I uh, got called up the CEO's office trying to explain uh, a big uh, expense that we're going to have to record. I remember uh, many uh, times I had to do that, uh, you know, right into the CEO's office, and he was usually not a happy camper. But if I brought uh, capitalize interest to them and say, hey, I'm going to take that interest expense out of expense, off the income statement, and into an asset. That's what we call capitalized expense. Uh, he, I would have been uh, his good friend then. So again, uh, thank you for uh, bearing with me here through this chapter, uh, th these problems. And uh, the next lecture uh, will be about what happens after the acquisition of property, plant, and equipment, and long-term assets. Uh, thank you.